You know what? I teach Lang Chain since over one and a half years on this channel, and yes, I actually hate it. But not so fast, I don't want to jump on that Lang Chain is trash train, but I want to speak about the good parts and also of course about the bad parts and why I actually prefer Langgraph over Langchain by a mile. One complaint about Langchain is the abstraction. I've read many many posts and articles why the abstraction is bad. That chat OpenAI and chat Llama abstract away the underlying API. Yes, that's true, but that's the good part of Langchain. Just by using the chat model classes, you can easily switch out one class by another by using something like a simple factory pattern or a strategy pattern. The same applies for templates, parsers, and retrievers. They all share the same interface, the runnable interface, which allows you to easily call just the onvoke method on each class. So it's pretty straightforward to use. Langchain wants to compose chains or complicated workflows like this. So we've got this retrieval chain, and here you can see this pipe operator. We've got a prompt, we pipe that to a model, we pipe that to an output parser. So that's the way you create chains. So this example is a quite simple rack chain where you use the pipe operator and chain runnables. The pipe operator is actually achieved by overloading the underscore underscore or method. Then you use the invoke method and the question gets passed through the complete chain. So for simple examples like this, this is great. But what if you want to return the documents from a chain? What if you want to re-rank the documents? Want to use two models and compare the results? For everything somewhat complicated, LCL, so the Langchain expression language, is a freaking mess. Here is an example from my Langchain course. Would you understand what's going on on there? How would you debug that code or write a simple unit test for that chain? In professional software development, you have to write tests for your code. It's just no way around that. So my recommendation is, don't use Langchain for anything complex. But there is good news. Langgraph goes a different way and lets you define workflows with nodes and edges. You can even define circular workflows. At any time, you've got control over the state in Langgraph. Want to return the documents? Just access the docs attribute of the state. Want to write unit tests? Easy. Each node is just a function and you have to write simple mock objects just for something like the chat model, but not for everything involved in the agent's workflow. I'm gonna show you that by example now. Okay, I'm now in Visual Studio Code in the Langgraph versus Langchain IPython notebook. If you want the code for yourself, then you can find the link to the repository in the description. So first I'm gonna load the OpenAI API key, and then we're gonna create a simple rag chain. So we use files as our vector store with a single document. So elephants are blue, that is the information that we want to retrieve from the vector store. We then gonna create a simple template with context that is the information retrieved from the vector store and the original question. And based on the question and the following context the LLM should answer that. So we've got this prompt, we've got this model, and we've got the retriever both implement the runnable interface. And now we can use these components, so the prompt model and vector store, to compose our chain. We do it like this, so we've got this runnable parallel and we pipe that to the prompt, we pipe that output to the model and that to an output parser. So pretty easy to use. We just use the chain and use the invoke method. So what is the color of an elephant that is retrieved from our vector store and the answer is blue. So very simple, but again, what would we have to do if we want to return the documents from the vector store? Where would you have to do something? We would have to do something here, but it's actually not that clear. And I think that makes Langchain quite difficult. So I actually prefer Langgraph over that. In Langgraph, you will just define that a state variable, which is normally a type dict or a pedantic class, and we set different keys like context. This is the result of the documents. It, I guess it could also be something like this. It's actually a list of strings. Then we've got the original question and we've got an answer and we also save the formatted prompt. So this is our state. And now we use functions or create functions that make use of the state. So we can just do it like this. Since this is a dictionary, we can use the invoke method of the retriever, pass the question, and then we get the documents and we store the documents in this context variable. Then we return the complete state. That is always necessary in Langgraph. For the prompt, we do something similar. We need, if you have a look at that, we need the context and we need the question in, in that uh, part of the chain. So we extract that from the state and we also extract the question. And then we use the invoke method here and pass a dictionary with context and question and we get the formatted prompt. Again, we return the complete state and this is separate from this. Let's now move to the generate answer function. Here, we only need the formatted prompt. We don't need the complete documents. We don't need the original question. We just need that formatted prompt. So we extract that 
by accessing this formatted prompt key and pass that value to the invoke method of the model. And we then just save that again, the content attribute of that uh, answer in the state again. Again, we return the complete state. So that's totally decoupled from that. And I think this is a great benefit of LangGraph. After defining the functions, we just have to define our workflow. So we use the state graph class from LangGraph and we inherit from the retrieval state. So we define our workflow like this. And then we just add the nodes. So that are the functions with a key and the functions that we want to run. So we define format prompt, generate answer. So for each of the question, we define a single node and then we define the edge. From retrieve context, we want to pass the state to format prompt and from format prompt to generate answer and from generate answer to an end node. So this is when the workflow has finished. We then just have to set an entry point, use the compile method of the workflow and then we can just use it as before. So we can even visualize it like this. Here we can see that's the workflow in a graph representation. And here again, we just use the invoke method. We use the question, what is the color of an elephant? And if you have a look at that, here we now can get access to the complete state. So we can see the context. This was the document that was retrieved. We can see the original question and we can see the formatted prompt. So everything is available for us. So if you want to return the documents, we just would have to access the documents like this. So there's a dictionary, so we can just use the brackets here and we can see here we've got our documents now. Okay, so in this example, this was of course only an IPython notebook, but in the real world, you collaborate with your colleagues and you also want to test your software. You don't bring untested software to production. So let's say we want a feature in our graph or in our workflow that re-ranks the documents. So how would we do that here? We would have to hook in somewhere in that chain. And if I would develop that on my own and my colleague would have to do something different, but also something that would change the retrieval chain, it would be quite difficult to uh, collaborate. So it's much easier when I say, okay, just make a function and we will add that to the workflow later. And there we can test it independently. Like I said, in the real world, you only roll out tested software. And in LangGraph, that's pretty easy. We just have a look at the test underscore rec dot uh, pi. And here we can see that we define our state again. As I, uh, as I said before, context is a list of strings, question is a string, answer is a string, and the formatted prompt also. Then we define a so-called fixture. That is a dummy value used in each test because we don't actually want to make a request to OpenAI to validate our answer. So we mock that object. So we don't have to mock the complete chain here, but we only, in the retriever context function, we have to mock the retriever. And especially here, you can see that's the complete object, but we want to mock the invoke method and here the return value. We want to say that the retriever retrieves this and we say that the sky is blue. So we can just see if the invoke method was called once with that dummy question and if we save that correctly in the context variable. So we can easily test it like this. So for the prompt, we do the same. We mock the prompt and mock the invoke method here also set a new return value for that. And here we can see that this should be the answer. And again, we check if the updated state is the state that we expect. And we do the same again for the generate answer function. Again, we check if the invoke method was called and if the state is the state we expect. So we just run after that PyTest and we test our functions and everything is green. So now we've got 100% tested software. This would not be possible with LangChain. So my recommendation is that you use the good parts of LangChain and combine it with the good parts of LangGraph. And in combination, I think you've got easily the best framework out there. I think it's not high level, so you've got a lot of control, but it's not so low level that you have to control everything. I think the middle ground is pretty much a perfect sweet spot. Okay, we are now at the end of this video. So now a little summary of the LangChain pipeline limitations versus the LangGraph's advantages. So the first one is tight coupling. Components in LangChain are interdependent and linked in sequence, which makes isolation and testing very difficult while changes in one component can easily impact the entire chain. And I think LangGraph's modular approach of isolating functions makes testing and individual component adjustments much easier and less risky. Then we've got the opaque data flow. LangChain's hidden intermediate steps make data transformations harder to track and debugging more challenging. But in contrast, LangGraph's explicit retrieval state shows data movement at each step and simplifies the visibility and troubleshooting. Then we've got difficult mocking. So LangChain's components 
require complex mocks and limit precise unit testing. But on the other hand, Langref isolates functions and simplifies mocking, which allows for a focused and granular unit test for each part. The last one is limited extensibility. So Langchain's rigid structure complicates adding new functionality and reusing components in different contexts. But on the other hand, Langref is flexible. It is function-based and makes extending functionality or reusing components across different workflows easy and straightforward. So in my opinion, Langref is much better than Langchain. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.